What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at updating database records for our tree view with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at updating database records for our tree view app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time via just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, moving right along with our TreeView, TreeBase app here. We've got this set up to where we're pulling this stuff from the database, and we can update a record. So if we click on this, it says John Elder. If we change it to John Elder 2, it'll do that but it's just updating it right now on this tree view in this Stripe table thing. It's not actually updating it in the database itself. And we want this to update in the database so that if we close this program and open it again, any changes we've made, any updates we've made will be saved to the database and will be you know, shown accordingly. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. And it's actually pretty simple. So head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to all the other Kinter videos in the playlist. There's almost 200 of them now. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out. So let's head down to the bottom of our code from last time. And you'll see whenever we're clicking on something in the tree view, widget, we're calling this select record function. So if we look at that function, when we click on a thing, you'll notice it's putting the output of whatever we're clicking in those in, in those boxes. So we run this again, you'll notice we click on something, it's adding them in these boxes. So we have all of the data already sort of separated out into nice little boxes. All we have to do now is sort of update the database with whatever's in those boxes. And that's actually pretty simple. So let's head back over here. And what we want here is the update record function. So when we click that button, let me run it one more time. Right here, we pull up a record. When we click this update record button, change that back to elder two, right there, boom, this update record function gets called and that's what we wanna mess around with in this video. So here we are, it's update record. And you can see it's grabbing the stuff and it's updating it in the tree view, but we wanna actually, and then it's clearing the boxes afterwards. So inside of here, we wanna actually update the database. I wanna spell that right, right? So we can come up here to where we queried the database and you'll see these steps right here. We always wanna do these two things whenever we're working with the database. First, we have to connect to the database right here, and then we have to create a cursor. We've already talked about this stuff in the past. And then when we're done, we need to commit it and close it. So actually we can just kinda of copy, well, I guess we can copy all of this if we're gonna be lazy. Come back down here to the update function, update records, there it is. And let's just paste this stuff in. Now, obviously we're not gonna need all of this stuff, so we can get rid of that. But we want to, but we do want to connect to the database. It's our tree dash CRM database. And we want to set a cursor and we don't need this stuff either. And when we're done making our changes, we want to commit and we also want to close. So all we have to do now is designate what we want to do. So let's go c.execute. And we're going to be working with a bunch of different things. So I'm going to use triple quotation marks. So we can do this on multiple lines. So what we want to do here is we want to update the database and what what do we want to update? We want to update our customers table. And then we want to set, and then let's put this stuff on separate lines. We want to set the first underscore name to something. I'm just going to call this first. We want to set the last underscore name to something. Again, I'm just going to call this last. And these are sort of like placeholders that we can then take other things and sort of slap them in there and you'll see what that mean. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. We also want to update the address and that's going to be address. We also want the city and that'll be city. We want the state and that'll be state. We also want the zip code and that will be zip code. Okay. So we want to set these things right? These are the things we want to edit or update, right? Well, what do we want to edit them with? Well, we want to edit them with, so we type in here where OID equals colon OID, and then boom, 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 three of those quotation marks again. And actually that gets rid of these. And, but here, now we need to designate exactly what we're changing, right? 
And this OID, we talked about this in the last video, that's our primary key, right? That's our ID number. So this is how we're determining what we wanna update. We're saying, hey, update the record that has this OID, this primary key, this ID number, right? So, okay, that will designate which record we want to update. And again, this is placeholder text that we'll fill in in a second here. And now what exactly do we wanna do? Well, we've got this stuff set up as placeholder text. So we need to define each of these things, right? So we'll do that right here. So first, and this is a Python dictionary, you can, you can tell that because we're using these brackets. And first is gonna be fn underscore entry dot get. Right now, where am I getting that? Well, that is the buttons. So these are all of the buttons. So first name entry, last name entry, ID entry, address entry, city entry, state entry, and zip code entry, right? Those are the buttons, or those are the boxes that are being filled whenever we click on the tree view, right? So, okay, we just have to sort of do one of these for each of these. So let's just kind of rough this in. First name, last name, address, city, state, zip code and ID number. So this will be last, this one will be address, this one will be city, this one will be state, this one will be zip code, and this last one is gonna be OID. That's this guy right here, right? Okay, so now we just need to come through here and sort of, we could just copy each of these. So this will be LN, Address is address entry. Just kind of copying and pasting here. City entry, that'll be this one. State entry will be this one. Zip code entry is this one. And finally, that ID is ID entry. That'll be OID. And so that's pretty much it. Clean that up a bit. We want to commit the changes and close the connection. So I kind of went through that really fast and didn't probably do a great job explaining it, but this is just a SQL command. We're saying, hey, update the database. What do we want to update in the database? We want to update the first name, the last name, address, city, state, and zip code. We want to do it with these things, right? Now here we're defining these things. It's just a good idea to break these up. You don't necessarily have to, but it's just better this way. Just trust me. <laughs> and uh, you'll see this is the whole SQL command, right? Between these three quotation marks. We're saying, hey, update the customer table. We wanna set the first name, last name, address, city, state, zip code, where the OID equals an OID that we've designated. So what of all of these things are we designating? What OID, what last name, first name, etc.? That's where we define these things down here. And these are just, these guys are these placeholders that we're now defining, and then we're putting them as the entry boxes. These are our Kinter entry boxes that we defined earlier. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and save this, run it. A little bit confusing, but shouldn't be too bad. And you notice we're still printing out all this stuff. So let me go back real quick, and let me just search for a print. Yeah, here we're doing that. Let's comment this out. I don't think we really need to do that anymore. That was just for Example purposes, last video over. So now let's go ahead and run this. So python treebase.py. And now we could pull this over here. Now we click on one of these, it fills out these boxes. And these are the boxes we just designated, right? The FN entry and LN entry, etc. So let's change this from John Elder to John Elder of two. We click update record, boom, it updates it up here. Because you remember, we did that earlier, way back at the beginning of this playlist, we had it already updating the tree view. So that works. Now if we close this and let's run this guy again, when we open it, you'll notice it now says elder two by default, right? So that's been changed in the database. So success, we've done this correctly. So let's change this back, change it back to elder two, update the record. It updates it there. If we close this, we run it again. The two is gone. So that proves to us that it has actually been updated in the database. And that's all there is to it. So that's how to update records in the database. Pretty simple. We've got it updating it in the tree view and it's also now updating in the database. So we're good to go. And that's all there is to it. 
So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships and pay just $49 taxes. All my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.